Hello, Pokemon trainers! Welcome back to another Pokemon Sword and Shield video here on iStarly TV. Uh, we are here at the release of Pokemon Sword and Shield, or they're nearly here, so uh, I'm super excited for these games. Can't wait to get my hands on them. I might, depending on when I post this video, because I might be careful about when I post it because of kind of spoiler reasons, but uh, I might very well already have the game by the time I'm posting this video. But I wanted to make a video here showing all of the evolution methods for all of the brand new Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield. And this does include all of the new Gal Galarian forms and their evolutions. So I think this video will be really, really helpful. Of course, I do want to say before you watch the whole thing, spoiler warning. So. If you don't know all of the brand new Pokemon yet and you want to be surprised, keep that in mind. I'm going to be showing every single new Pokemon revealed in Pokemon Sword and Shield and every single new Galarian form that has been confirmed, or not even confirmed, but, but all of them, even the ones that have not been officially confirmed yet. So keep that in mind. Um, this video will be full of spoilers, but this is going to show you how to evolve every single Pokemon, every single new Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield. And by the way, I must first of all say, the information in this video is the most accurate that I could find. I am aware that there are some evolution methods here that are a little bit contentious. People are a little bit unsure right now, not 100% sure on a couple Pokemon. So when I get to those Pokemon, I will specify the different options that people have said. And if there are any changes, definitely look in the comment section. I will pin a comment from myself clarifying any misinformation. So if I happen to make a, a mistake or two here, I will be clarifying in the comments um, if, if there's any updates to this information. But again, I do believe I have all of the most accurate information here. So let's go ahead and begin. So this first page has all of the starters as well as the Corviknight evolutionary line. And let's start with the starters. The starters all evolve into their second form at level 16, which is pretty standard fare. We've had starters in the past that evolve later, some that evolve earlier. This time around, all of the starters evolve at the same levels. And then they all evolve into their final forms at level 35. So that's also, you know, a little bit earlier than some and a little bit later than others in the past. Next, we have the Corviknight evolution line who evolves at a similar level, a couple levels later than the starters. Rookity, the first stage, evolves into the second stage Corvusquire at level 18, and then Corvusquire evolves into Corviknight at level 38. Next, we have a lot of other early game Pokemon, so I'll kind of go through these quickly. Squovet evolves into Greedent at level 24. Wooloo and Dubwool also evolve, or Wooloo also evolves into Dubwool at level 24. Gossiflor evolves into Eldegoss at level 20. Nicket evolves into Thievul at level 18. Yamper evolves into Boltund at level 25. And then Milkery evolves into Alcremi when you give it a sweet and you have to spin around apparently. So I've actually seen this in the game. Again, I'll, I'll clarify if there's something I'm missing here but there are different sweet items in the game. I think there's a lot of different ones, and I think depending on which one you give to Milkery, it'll evolve into a different color of Alcremie. So you might have seen from previous videos, from previous trailers of Sword and Shield, there are different colored Alcremies, and so depending on which type of sweet you give it, I think that'll determine which coloration Milkery evolves into. Next, we have a few more Pokemon that you obtain somewhat early in the game. We have the kind of basic bug Pokemon that you can catch early in the game. This is Blipbug, which evolves into Dotler at level 10 and then into Orbeetle at level 30. So that's a pretty late level for, a, er, for an early game bug type. Then we have Choodle, who evolves into Dreadnought somewhat early as well at level 22. And then we have the Hatterene line which is kind of a counterpart to Impidimp, but I couldn't fit the Impidimp line on this page as well. Hatterina is evol- or sorry, <laughs> Hat Hatina evolves into Hattrem at level 32, and then Hattrem evolves Hatterene at level 42. Hatterene is a really powerful Pokemon, so it kind of 
pays off that you kind of have to wait a while until you receive Hatterene, which is level 42. That's kind of later. Next, we have Aracuda, who evolves into Barrascuta at level 26. This is also a really strong Pokemon, so that's a pretty good level to evolve into Barrascuta. And here we continue to have some more interesting Pokemon. So, Silicobra evolves into Sandaconda at level 36. Sinistee is an interesting one. It evolves into Poltegeist when you give it a specific item. So, I think there are two different forms of Sinistee and Poltegeist. One is a cracked Sinistee and one is a chipped Sinistee, I believe. And so, there is a cracked teapot or a chipped teapot. And if you give those items to Sinistee, it'll evolve into the respective kind of version of Poltegeist. I don't believe there's too much of a difference in appearance, but it does depend. Next, the Roly Coley line. Roly Coley evolves into Cor or sorry, Carcol at level 18, and then Carcol into Colossus at level 34. So that's kind of around the same levels as the starters, give or take a couple. Next is Qfant, Qfant, which evolves into Copperaja at level 34. After that is the Impident line, which I said is very similar to the Hatterene line. And in fact, it's, it's even more similar because they both evolve at the same levels. Impidimp into Morgrem at level 32, and then Morgrem into Grimmsnarl at level 42. Finally, for this slide, we have Toxel, which evolves into Toxtricity at level 30. You might have seen there are actually two forms of Toxtricity. The one that's displayed here is yellow. I believe it's called the Amped Up form. And then there's a one that's blue and purple, which I believe is called the Low Key form. Now, I, I might do a separate video on this information as well, but it actually depends on your Toxel's nature. So whatever to Toxel's nature is, That'll determine which of the Toxtricity forms it evolves into, and it, it's still at level 30. Now, the Toxtricity, the two forms, they have the same stats, and they're the same exact typing. Um, I do believe they have a difference in abilities, though, so that might depend on, that might determine what, which one you want, and plus also the way they look is kind of different. So you might want, well, at least the color is a little bit different. So you might want one over the other, but again, their stats are exactly the same. I think they might learn different moves as well. So this is a really interesting one. Next, we have some more interesting details. So Snome, who is a fan favorite and ice and bug type, very unique, evolves into Frostmoth when you level it up with maximum friendship at night. So this is very specific. Um, usually we've had Pokemon that evolve by leveling up at night, and then Pokemon who evolve that level up with friendship. This combines the two. This is actually the same evolution method as Umbreon, which is kind of cool. Next is Sizzlipede, which is a fire and bug type, which evolves into Scorch at level 28, so not that bad. After that is Clobopus, which evolves into Graplocked when you level up while knowing the move Taunt. So we've had evolutions like this in the past. Pretty interesting here. I don't know what level it learns taunt. I'll have to check on that. Maybe I'll add an addendum in the comments. Next, we have Applin, which is actually becoming one of my favorite Pokemon from this new generation. Applin, you'll notice it's, it appears twice here because it actually has two different evolutions. So, and, and they are version exclusive. So, Applin evolves into Flapple, which is the, the one with the wings spread open when you give it the tart apple in Pokemon Sword version. So I believe the tart apple is exclusive to Sword. You probably can trade it to Shield if you want your if you or your friend wants a specific version or a specific form, but just know that you get the tart apple in Sword which gives you Flapple and then you get the sweet apple in Shield which gives you Appleton. So pretty interesting stuff here. I personally like Appleton better. So, and I'm I'm probably going to be playing Sword, so I'm going to have to find a way to get Appleton, but I really want it. And then finally, we have the pseudo-legendaries of the generation. Very disappointing. These were becoming my favorite Pokemon from the new, the new batch. But then I saw the levels that it evolves, and that made me really disappointed. And pretty much there's no reason to have it on my team now, because by the time I evolve it into Dragapult, it's gonna, I'm gonna be at the end of the game, but anyways, Dreepy evolves into Dracloak at level 50, which is very, very high, 
That's the level that Shelgon evolves into Salamence, just to put that into perspective. And then Dracloak evolves into Dragapult at level 60, which is very, very high. Uh, that's not as high as Hydreigon, you know, Zuelis evolves into Hydreigon at level 64, which is very disappointing as well. It's always my favorite new Pokemon that evolves so high. <laughs> Anyways, very unfortunate. So that's it for all the brand new species of Pokemon. Let's get to the Galar forms and their evolutions. So on the first page of Galarian forms and their evolutions, Galarian Meowth evolves into Perserker at level 28. Very interesting because it's, it's a Pokemon that Meowth only evolves into in Galar. So that's really awesome. I actually really like Perserker. Um, and that, that's the same level that Meowth normally evolves into Persian. Next is Galarian Ponyta, which evolves into Galarian Rapidash at level 40. Then is Galarian Farfetch'd. This is the one that is the most contentious. Apparently it evolves into Surfetch'd when you defeat three Pokemon in a single battle. So I've heard mixed things. I've heard it evolves into Surfetch when you defeat three Pokemon in the same battle. So that means when you're fighting a trainer, your Farfetch'd has to KO three Pokemon in a row without fainting. Or without, yeah, without fainting. Um, I've also heard that Galarian Farfetch'd evolves into Surfetch'd if you defeat 43 Pokemon. That's a lot. <laughs> I think it's the former. I think it's three KOs. Again, check the, if you try this three KO method, and uh, you, your Farfetch does not evolve, I do apologize and I will add an addendum in the comments to specify how to evolve it. Next is Galarian Coughing, or, or rather Coughing, which evolves into Galarian Weezing at level 35. Then is Galarian Mr. Mime, who has the, his first ever evolution, which evolves into Mr. Rhyme at level 42. I, I don't think of the names, I just give you the information. And then after that, there is Galarian Corsola, who evolves into get you guessed it Cursala at level 38 and we have the last grouping here Galarian Zigzagoon evolves into Galarian Lanoon at level 20 which is pretty standard that's what level Zigzagoon evolves into Lanoon anyway and then Lanoon evolves into Galarian or <laughs> Lanoon evolves into Obstagoon at level 35 at night so two specifications there after that is Galarian Darumaka who evolves into Galarian Darmanitan using the Ice Stone. Now, the Ice Stone is a unique item. I believe they introduced it in one of the previous generations, but that is actually also the way that you evolve Eevee into Glaceon in these games. So previously, you had to find a special Icy Rock for Eevee to evolve with, but this time around, they made it easier. So the Ice Stone will evolve Darumaka into Darmanitan, and then finally, we have another one that was a little bit contentious, but I believe this is the correct way. Galarian Yawmask will evolve into Runerigus, Runerigus we'll call it, um, when you walk under the large stone in the Dusty Bowl area. I have also heard that your Yawmask actually does need to be at level 40, around 49 to do this. So I would advise you to try this with your Yawmask at whatever level it's at. And then, if that doesn't work, then try to raise it to level 49 or 50, and then try it again. Um, I have heard stories of people trying this method, and it didn't work. And then when they leveled up their Yaw Mask, and then tried it again, they walked under the stones, it did work. So, maybe I'll do a video when the games actually come out, and I actually have a Galarian Yaw Mask, so I'll try it out myself. But, that's pretty much it. <laughs> and that's pretty much it for all of the brand new Pokemon and Galarian forms in Pokemon Sword and Shield. That is how you evolve all of them. I hope this video helped you out. I'm really, really excited to really get into the games, beat the story mode, catch all these new Pokemon, maybe do some shiny hunting, definitely do some battles. I just, I just can't wait. I'm super excited. I hope you are too. Please leave a like if this video helped you out with evolving some of your favorite Pokemon, some of your favorite new Pokemon from Sword and Shield. And also, please leave a comment to let me know which is your new favorite Pokemon or new Galarian form in Sword and Shield. Also, definitely subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications when we post more videos. Now that Sword and Shield are pretty much out, we're going to be posting a lot of new videos frequently. I cannot wait. I'm super excited. I hope you are too. I hope you enjoy your games. I'll see you soon.